Hello, Jeff Zwerink here. Welcome back to Testable Faith. I'm joined in studio today with Dr. Kevin Birdwell. He's one of our scholar community members who's joining us via the Visiting Scholar Program. Kevin, good to have you back in the studio today. It's good to be here. You know, as, as Christians, we do care a lot about how people and how humans flourish. And one of the ways that plays out today is that we use power, we use energy, that that allows us to do a lot of things that live well and to take care of others well. But that has a lot of things that go into it. I know one of those, you know, we've talked to other places about how much energy and do you get out of what you, the, the source you're using, but that's not the only consideration at play. What else comes into that calculation? Well, also the nature of the power sources. So some power sources, uh, you know, you can essentially turn them on 24 seven and others uh, you have to depend on nature. So especially mm -hmm. something like solar or wind, uh, you have to wait till the wind is uh, blowing properly to get the power you need, or the sun is shining in a way that you get the power you need. Well, so I'm just sitting there envisioning, uh, I want to go and give a power source to somebody. I could give them a, a solar cell, put it in their yard, plug, you know, get it, get it says, okay, here's the power. But the reality of it is if they needed to use it sometime at night, they couldn't. So it, it seems like that's the sort of thing you're talking about there is how available is it and can you can you use it when you need it or can you only use it when nature is providing the source if you will right and there are some and and there are some renewable resources like hydropower and geothermal that you basically can use 24 7 mm -hmm. um but they're limited to certain areas and, and it's certainly not available everywhere right uh but then uh other power sources like let's say wind um, you would have to have a way to store it. And really, really, there's about three ways you can solve this problem. Um, either you have an oversupply, let's say you have uh, twice as many turbines as you normally need so that you, and, and, and you can turn them on at a certain time mm -hmm. if, you need, if you need them. Another way you can do it is you can increase the size of your network mm -hmm. so that it covers a very large area and... Um, you know, maybe the wind's blowing somewhere else and you can transport it here. Okay. Um, the problem with that is you're making yourself more susceptible to the environment. You know, if you have bad weather or something that destroys part of your network. Mm -hmm. um, if right. you, another way is you can store the energy and that right. would be with something like battery technology or thermal storage. Uh, there are a few others. Um, but there we still have some issues too. Um, battery technology is still very expensive. Uh -huh. um, I think thermal is being developed. It's probably, I would go with that over battery, but, but there, let's just say that it's very challenging uh -huh. to make an intermittent energy source into something that is your base load. And right. what do I mean by base load? Base load is the minimum power that is required to sustain the minimum requirements of your power network. So <clears throat> your power company, you know, doesn't just turn the power on and leave it alone. Mm -hmm. uh, it has to, they have to supply the power uh, based on the power demand. And the power demand mm -hmm. changes dramatically throughout the day, throughout the week, right. uh, different different weather conditions. Um, it, it's actually quite an art that they have to uh, pursue in, in meeting the demands of power. That's actually, I kind of want to just spend a little bit of time on that because, yeah, you know, I just know we've just been coming out of summer. In fact, we're just having a little bit of a heat wave. Um, during the day, people just use air conditioners. That's a very energy intensive uh, thing to run an air conditioner. And so I could imagine you just need a bunch of energy during the day and then it cools off and actually gets down into the low, high 60s, low 70s at night, you don't want to be air conditioning then. And so just even day to night, it seems like that's quite a significant enter or the amount of power that we need. So, so the, the, the power company has to be able to monitor and figure all that out kind of in real time. It would seem it's not a trivial task. That's kind of what that's, I'm getting. That's at right. So if, if, you know, if they're using coal or gas or something like, like a fossil fuel like that, they're, you know, it, it's fairly, simple for them to ramp up the power. They can increase the gas flow or, or add more coal. Uh, but if you're using something like solar, let's say, well, that power is going to diminish uh, in the evening. And, and evening is one of the times that, that 
power demand is actually quite high. So, so right. therefore, you've either got to have another power source to kick in to meet that demand, or you've got to store it in mm-hmm. some way and then release it when you need it. Uh, that makes things complicated. Now, a lot well, of times... Well, and and just ahead. speaking directly to that, I remember I was working, one of the <clears throat> telescopes I was building was... Uh, on a plant that was a solar power plant earlier. And, you know, they could run at 11 megawatts when the sun was up. But their claim to fame was that they ran for some number of months continuously generating power, but their base, their, their low, their power output was one megawatt or better. Mm-hmm. So when the sun was out, they could do 11 megawatts. When the sun mm-hmm. wasn't out, the best they could do was about one, maybe two megawatts. So there's a significant drop off in, in being able to store the energy, it seems, you know, if you have to use a battery or something like that. Well, this has been a significant challenge for power companies, uh, adding renewables uh, such as wind and solar. They, they, they certainly do serve a purpose, mm-hmm. but it seems that when they become a significant percentage of the grid, mm-hmm. then it makes the grid more unstable unless they have taken uh, extensive measures to compensate for that. And so... Typically, this uh, baseload power has been supplied by something like like fo- a fossil fuel, like coal mm-hmm. or gas, and sometimes nuclear. And nuclear, uh, a large nuclear plant uh, doesn't ramp up quite as fast as, say, a coal plant or a gas plant might, but it still can serve as a baseload power. And some of the new nuclear that's mm-hmm. that's being promoted today, uh, especially of the molten salt reactor variety, which gives you a liquid fuel and a liquid coolant, well, it's it's very easy to change the flow of that um, sort of a plant. So so its response to mm-hmm. baseload needs could actually be a lot better. So when, when we're talking about ramping up a plant, you, know, you talked about ramping up coal or, you know, ramping, or you know, the inflow of gas or how hot the coal is or how much coal you're adding. What's the time scale on that? Are we talking days? Are we talking minutes, hours? Oh, I would say minutes to hours. Minutes to hours. So, okay, so that is something that as you're coming up on nighttime and more people are coming home and there's just going to be more power, you can say, all right, we're going to start to ramp this up at 4 o'clock and be ready to go. It, whereas if you're dealing with wind or solar, you've got to be able to do that same sort of thing if that supply is a significant component of your electronic grid or right. your power grid. And, and, and on, in all honesty, it's good to have a number of, different energy sources mm-hmm. and it gives the it gives the utility more options right but they have to have at least some of them that they know they can depend on anytime so there's two components to running a good power grid one is having something that is just reliable and can fill whatever we need at any given time and then having other sources that kind of give you more knobs and dials to tweak to make sure that you're being able to supply whatever the energy is for the for the needs of the moment. Right. And, you know, this kind of a issue with renewables has been playing out in Europe, for example. Um, in Germany, um, they they had a number of nuclear power plants uh, going going into the 2010s and after the Fukushima accident, decided to close down all their plants. Mm -hmm. Now, Germany has probably had more experience than anybody with wind power. Mm -hmm. And after they shut down their plants, they had a problem with this intermittency issue. Mm -hmm. They ended up having to open coal plants Uh uh, instead. Now, um, in France, they didn't do that. France has traditionally had as much as 80% of their power from nuclear. And uh, they have been adding renewables there as well, but they already have that baseload power of nuclear. So that gives you a much more reliable mm-hmm. grid to add the renewables to. Right. So I think right now in France, it's about 64% nuclear and, and renewables add a lot more to the rest of that. But um, I think they've done it very well there. Any closing thoughts? Well, I would just say that we need to, be cautious about just um, running after any particular uh, energy source. We need to think it through and ask the questions, how is this going to be integrated into our society? Is it going to hinder our power needs? Is it going to help our power needs? Mm -hmm. Is it going to make the grid less stable or more stable? I mean, I'm not saying that we shouldn't use particular resources, especially ones that are intermittent. But what I am saying is we need to be careful and thoughtful how we add them mm-hmm. to the grid so that we don't end up 
with a situation that actually makes us more vulnerable to the environment and more vulnerable to uh, the problems that go into not having a grid. I mean, we depend on many things uh, today. If we didn't have our electric grid, you know, we couldn't do medical services. Right, we yeah. couldn't do so many different things and, and, uh, and that society depends on today. Well, thanks, Kevin. I really appreciate your comments. And, you know, as Kevin's thought about this and how we can take care of people well by how we use our electricity and generate power, I would encourage you to go to reasons.org, search for Kevin Birdwell and get more of the resources he has developed to help us think well about how we take care of people. 